of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as I ask for a moment of silence. Past member of Engine 2, Charles Lee Clark. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Roll. Alderman Tobin. Here. Alderman Jean Francois. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. Alderman Ray. Here. Alderman Kleiner. Here. Alderman Green. Here. Alderman Witt. Here. Alderman Massey. President Rodriguez. Here. Quorum is present. Approval of minutes. We have the minutes from December 20th, 2022. I have a motion to approve. Alderman Green, second by. Alderman Witt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence. Nothing this evening. For the good of the city, I would like the mayor to come up. Put it here. Here. You want to do both of us together? Yeah. Both. Oh, a microphone. Uh, yeah. Hey, we'll do it over here, right? Busy place tonight, and well deserved. We have the Super Bowl champions with us tonight. So, we want to offer our congratulations and let you all know how proud we are as a city that um, your your program has excelled for many many years. And you know the um, this board and uh, the previous board, we have been very supportive because of the. Uh, great work you've been doing, the parents and the volunteers, and especially the players, where we um, have constructed Woolslayer Field in your honor for your use and to grow that league and to um, make sure you have facilities. And before the field is even um, permanently dedicated, you guys brought us home a Super Bowl championship. So we want to say thank you. So tonight we're going to present each member a certificate along with a $10,000 check. That's only a joke. <laughs> yeah. Andrew said he played on the team too. But we're going to present a certificate of recognition for each member to say um, thank you for your hard work throughout the year and congratulations for a job well done. So we'll call up individually. As you get up, if you can just stand up here so then we can take a group picture um, and uh, Post it on all our social media so we can let our whole community know how proud we are of the hard work that you've done. And so we'll start with Mason Reynolds. Uh, well, you're going to stay up here too. You're the coach, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. There's a few of them. You yep. You let me know who's not here. Next is uh, Yanni Lawrence. Okay. Carter Lewis. Raymond Gray. Next is Owen McZorn. <laughs> Jacob Price. Drew Myers. Suprel Roman. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Elijah Brown. <laughs> Jacob Carey. <laughs> Liam Flynn. <laughs> Matthew DeGroote. Paul Stewart, Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Ethan Arundel. Yeah. You a wide receiver? No. Congratulations. <laughs> Jonah Batista. Xander Robinson. <laughs> and Corey Royal. Maria there with not the camera? Oh, there she is. Coaches. Yeah, get the coaches up here too. You guys wanna you wanna introduce you? Wanna say a few words Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, my name is Maurice Lewis. Um I was the head coach unfortunately this year with the youth football. Um a lot of these young guys up here was their first year ever playing in the sport. They got signed up and they um, got into the contact of football. And um, a lot of people didn't believe that they can get this far. Mind you, they did not only win the Super Bowl, but they went undefeated winning the Super Bowl. Um, and, that's, and that's big. Um, the only team in Middletown that did that. And just for the record, for the youth, um, it starts here with the kids. You know, we uh, Middletown supports the sports big time, especially with football. And it starts right here with these young ones. So you know, if you know anybody or if you got any young ones that want to sign up, I think it's been advertised and posted for the register for this year. Um, it's posted on the website as well, I believe. Look into it. Sign the kids up because this is where it starts. All right. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. somebody else we'll get we'll get you one where is he he's not here today That's oh he's not here okay we'll make sure we get him on that right, appreciate I'm glad we didn't uh, leave him out. <laughs> we left one out number 14 awesome. thank you very much thank you Take a couple minute break while yeah, they have we're going to take a break. All right, for the good of the city, anyone else would like to address the council, please step forward. I got a little bit of a mystery, is, um, and I talked to Alex Smith, your council, 
He didn't have an answer for me, so he told me to come here and said, you guys are gonna probably straighten things out for me. So this is the deal. I have a two family house in Middletown and um, I don't live there. And I had the inspector, uh, Sixto, I think Martinez, he went through and um, it's a three bedroom and it's a couple, but there's another guy, he's not related and he lives in the other bedroom. And, um, you know, and he, he even like gave me the law that it pertains to, but basically what it says is, you, if you're renting an apartment, you can't have a non-related person living in that apartment. That's what kind of like the law says. And I told him, I said, you know, that doesn't make sense. Like suppose, suppose you get a couple that's not married, they're not related, and they're living like, why is, why is that okay? And, um, or even like I told him, like that 90 Day Fiance show, I said, if they rent an apartment in Middletown, they can't do it because you get two unrelated people living in it, you know, renting an apartment. And, um, and he kind of agreed with me, he goes, you know what, it doesn't make sense to me either. But he goes, it's the law, like I'm here to enforce the law, so it's not up to me to decide it makes sense. You know, and I agree with him, that, that's not his, not his thing. So then I contacted, you have like a website, and I just thought I'd contact another inspector, Walt Welch, and he never got back to me, so I guess he doesn't have an answer either. That I contacted your, the lawyer, Alex Smith, and he wasn't, he doesn't really know. He said, like, you know, why don't you come here? So, so I'm here, and um, because I know, I know a couple that lives in Middletown. They're not married. They have an apartment, you know, together. And they never got challenged, you know. It's, 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 um, it's kind of a funny, funny law, I think. I think even if you rent an apartment, you should be allowed to have like one unrelated person. And by related, it means, you know, parents, kids, or siblings, no cousins or anything like that. What's the address of the property? It's 413 North Street. 413 North Street. And I, I guess you're the landlord? Yes. And it's a two family? Yes. So if you have a lease, they don't have to be married or, or related. So if they're there, if... If me and Rick want to be roommates and we both on, we're both on a lease, it's that's legal. But it sounds like you're like trying to rent a room. If the person comes in and the person comes back, that's not allowed. Okay, that's the kind of explanation I was looking for. Okay, so, um, okay, I run the whole thing like really like loosey goosey, and I have like no. <laughs> written agreements with anybody okay. but but basically if you're saying if i signed up a lease with everybody's name on it then it's legit so it depends on on the city when the city inspectors they come out you have to do a rental permit they have to do the inspection they'll ask for a copy of the lease and they'll say who's on the lease me and rick on one apartment this one is on this apartment and that's it and if we move out, you got to report to the city again that you, you have a vacancy and, and you need a rental permit. Who collects the rent from the person? I do. Well, you're, you're, you're running a boarding house then. Um, and that's the problem. Okay. Well, you know so what? The, ca the case that you presented is not entirely accurate, where if uh, me and a friend rent an apartment and we're unrelated, that's not what the code says. The code says is that you're renting an apartment to two separate people. You're renting, you're, you're, and you're collecting rent from two separate people. So that, that's your issue. Okay. So um, if I just collect it from one person and I have an agreement that has all their names on it. Uh, you, still, okay? you still can potentially have some problems with um, how you're operating it. But I can't give you a legal advice at this meeting, but, but the, the, the question that you answered is the driver for the code enforcement because you're collecting rent from two separate individuals. And uh, so the, the code doesn't say you can't, you, that people have to be married to live together or related to live together. But the code is specific to avoid people creating boarding houses uh, and collecting rent from separate individuals. Okay, because it says borders are not permitted in two family dwellings, which makes him a border. And what you're saying is. But he's not a border. He's, he's your tenant. Mm -hmm. You are two separate tenants. So. You know, I actually wanted to just collect the rent once and they <laughs> combine their money. Well. <laughs> it's like become like a, you know. But no, I, I could do that. I, I just tell them, hey, this is the deal. You, yeah, you know, there's, the there's, there's ways of doing it correctly but i can't okay. give you that advice 
at the meeting here. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I have to read the whole law and and can, but but the once you answer the question that you're collecting from both individually, yeah. you're you're basically running a boarding house, and that's okay. prohibited. Okay. All right. Um. So who do I contact to restructure it so it's like proper? Well, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have a conversation with Mr. Smith why he would not let us know what was happening oh. coming to the meeting and getting blindsided. <laughs> so um, I'll have that conversation with him tomorrow and see if there's more details that I'm missing here. So we'll, we'll get back. If you want to call and leave your, or leave your number, uh, name and number with the clerk, I'm sure we'll uh, be able to get back to you, okay? Okay, all right. All right, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else would like to address the council? Okay, remarks to the mayor. I want to thank you for the moment of silence. Uh, Charlie Clark is my father-in-law, and uh, Charlie spent many years um, as a member of the Eagles and Middletown Fire Department, and I'm sure his family thanks you for uh, uh, for the moment of silence. Also, um, on other news, the tonight you have in front of you, and it has to be passed tonight by um, all three municipal boards before, um, and, and then plus the Orange County, so make four, four legislative bodies, the sales tax sharing agreement. Um, the agreement is expired, um, effective uh, February 28th, and it takes um, a while to get it processed through the Comptroller's Office, been, there are deadlines that have to be met. This agreement, um, if you recall for the last few years, um, during the census count, that we every meeting we had slides up asking the people to fill out their census forms to make sure they respond that it matters to city taxpayers um, that every person that possible be counted. Well, for the next ten years, um, we will now we have flipped the sales tax formula, um, where Middletown was once a point or so point and a half behind. Uh, Newburgh, city of Newburgh on population, we have now flipped it the other way. We are now two points in front of Newburgh on population. And I don't mean that as a competition. I mean that as a, um, as a matter of fact, where the sales tax agreement that you're adopting tonight will continue the pro uh, process of um, the cities, towns, and villages in Orange County share about 26% plus of sales tax collected from all different um, uh, businesses and utilities within the county. Of that 26% plus, 32% plus is shared with the three cities. And by, you, you may ask for those who have not been around for a while, uh, not familiar with it, is the reason why there's a, the contract is between the county and the three cities, because the three cities are the ones that have a legal right to preempt the county on sales tax. So in order to avoid this battle over this distribution of money, um, we um, have for the past 25 or so years have had this agreement in place and it's worked for all involved. The towns and villages are a benefactor of the, of the contract and um, for no other reason other than they have representation in the county legislature also and and the right thing for the county to also include them in the sharing agreement. So we are now going to pick up um, in the next calendar year approximately $500,000 to the good um, for Middletown taxpayers based on all the work that was done uh, during the census. So I want to um, thank Maria and Caitlin from Economic Development, especially Caitlin, who took the ball by the horns, and she... Um, really uh, attended a lot of the meetings. Uh, Marie, I know, also did a lot meeting with different groups and all the organizations that we worked with trying to get people counted and all of the hard work that was done even by members of the board who we asked to make sure that um, your neighborhoods were, uh, people were aware that not only is the census the right thing to do, but it was the right thing to do for the city and for them as taxpayers. So uh, we're hoping for a vote tonight it will then be sent on to the other two cities for their signature and then forwarded to the county for a vote in early February. And that's all I have this evening. Any, <clears throat> questions? Any questions for the mayor? All right. Thank you, Mayor. 
You have one. I have one. Alderman Johnson. Uh, not related to this, and I don't want to blindside you, Mr. Mayor, but uh, Alderman Witt had communicated with Alderwoman Ray and myself uh, that at the Parks Commission they were talking about the plans for the water attraction at Maple Hill. And we've discussed with you a couple of times in the last year or so about a survey. Um, how should, what do you envision, how should we proceed? Is there anything that might happen in 2023? Well, I, I, I think the discussions that we had were more for the two of you, Correct. the third ward, to do some type of survey in that neighborhood to see what they would like there. Um, they, they might like the peace and quiet that's okay. come with the closure of the pool. And we can then put some resources into expanding the Davidge Park area. But there's also been discussion of a, um, um, of a what do you call it, um, not a pool there, a sprinkle, splash, 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 splash pad, right. which um, is more geared towards little kids. And uh, since the facilities are there, and it would be much cheaper. A new pool um, will probably run us in the area. I don't, uh, I'm only going by what Newburgh is paying, and it's a much larger pool. Grant you, but Newburgh's paying over 14 million for their pool. Um, and they're using ARPA funds. Now, we would not be paying that kind of money here, but I guarantee you that it'd be in the two to $3 million range if we were going to replace Maple Hill. Um, but with our problems with lifeguards and the users, the primary users of the pools now are, are young kids and they seem to be enjoying the, um, the splash pad. So, uh, but we would defer to you okay. and Kate for the, um, for some guidance, and if you wanted to do a survey monkey for citywide, we certainly can do that also. But I think the um, um, the immediate feedback should come from that neighborhood, and see what their um, see what their opinions are, because it is right across the street from the residential area. It's not like Davidge, where it's somewhat isolated. Um, it's it's adjacent to a residential area. And we'll confer and proceed. How to figure out how to proceed with the survey. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Reports of departments, economic development. Good evening, everyone. Um, the office has been working on our annual meetings uh, for the bid district, the community development agency, the IDA, uh, submission of the action plan, and submission also the uh, Restore New York grant regarding the O&W. So all those good things have been happening past couple of weeks as we start off 2023. And that's all I have for tonight. Any questions for Maria? All right, thank you, Maria. Thank you. DPW Commissioner. Good evening. Um, I want to start by uh, thanking Dasney and uh, for coming down here and make a presentation before the Common Council regarding their water and uh, sewer connection. They are located on 17M, uh, the Mid-Hudson Psychiatric Center. They are building a brand new facility, $300 million. The state is investing in it, because uh, you know, creating uh, or keeping about 550 jobs locally in here. Um, city is very excited and uh, we're very happy, like the mayor stated during the meeting and the council, their support for the project and providing water and sewer services for this campus as the state does not want to be in the water and sewer business. So we're happy to accommodate them and encourage uh, that project to move forward and uh, hopefully to provide additional uh, growth, commercial growth, like the mayor stated in the uh, agreement between us and the county along 17M. So this is an excellent project and it's just going to be the beginning, I think, for, for, for uh, the growth for 17M. Um, the traffic operation, as you can see, the, the project has almost died uh, down because of the weather and will resume hopefully in February, uh, weather permitting. And uh, there's still some minor work that's taking place by the contractor for the traffic operations in downtown and putting up no parking signs and no standing here to corner and so on and so forth. They're just catching up uh, boys, the general contractor. Otherwise, the project is moving along very well. Um, you approved uh, awarding the contracts for um, rebuilding, um, not rebuilding, for uh, addressing um, deficiency issues at uh, Shawangang dams, which are three dams. The contractor has been working with us back and forth for the insurance 
and so that we can sign the contract and the construction can get started. And the same for Kench uh, Reservoir. There is one dam in there is going to be upgraded and um, and rebuilt. Um, and uh, that's all I have for tonight. If you have any questions for me, any questions for Jacob? All right. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, City Treasurer. Hi, good evening, everyone. I have in front of you a resolution to pass tonight. Uh, the city would like to offer a dual option with Knife Ship Health Insurance Plan. Uh, this is something new for this year. Uh, the plan will be self-insured under the city. The resolution is to allow uh, claim doc services to administer the plan. And what they will do is uh, administer the claims, um, help with the enrollment process, uh, educate eligible employees for the plan and also um, what they specialize is, is reference-based pricing meaning that they will go back to the providers and not necessarily pay an in-network price or out-of-network price but pay the actual cost of the services provided by the providers um, right now we do have the PBA bargaining unit that has a uh, approved for us to offer this plan, um, CSEA is now pending. And that's all I have for today. Uh, is there any questions? Any questions from the city treasurer? All right, thank you. Thank you. Police chief. <coughs> Good evening. So the last couple of weeks since uh, we met, we've had some alarming activity throughout the city with some of the shots fired incidents. Um, I have briefed uh, most of you on that. Some of you have I've had either follow-up conversation in person, telephone, or by text. Um, it's alarming to me. This is alarming to you. It's alarming to our community. Um, we have some challenges. I can't sit here and tell you why these are happening. I can tell you that we are working diligently. We're using resources that we have available to us both locally and through our law, law enforcement partners. Um, some of the challenges that I'll share with you, I can't share the tactics or where we are as far as the investigations. Um, we don't have specific victims in these. It's not like we have someone coming forward and saying, hey, this is what was done to me. We have presumed victims that are not 100% cooperative at this point. So that creates a challenge in and of itself. So a lot of that legwork is being done through technology through you know, the support of our community residents that are providing us some digital uh, evidence, which I greatly appreciate their, their support and their willingness to do such. It's been very, very helpful. Um, we are treating this just as we would treat a homicide. We put all of our resources into it. We don't put it on the back burner. This is on the front burner. These are very, very important to us. And we are doing our due diligence day in and day out. They follow up every day. I get our briefing every day of where we are, all the leads that have been developed, status, who we're looking at. Throughout the process, we have made some arrests. They're not connected directly to the incidents, um, but they were people that may or may not have been involved indirectly. Um, our, our goal was to maybe garner some information from those people to further our investigation. So we are trying to turn every stone. We're looking for you know, support from the community. We encourage members of the community, if they have anything, if they believe they may have some information, some knowledge, a piece of video, anything of that, um, it helps us build our puzzle. As I've shared with you in the past, we build this by little puzzle pieces. And our goal is to come up with a, a, a picture at the end, and that's what we would present for charges. So it is something we take very serious. We are working, the men and women are working, not just our detectives, the patrol officers that are out there day in and day out, and they are trying to do what they can by making arrests, finding information. <clears throat> I've also put out some uh, additional details over, uh, we started last week, to put out additional resources on the street to one, be out there to combat it, but also to try to garner some information as well, follow up on tips. Um, with that, I have nothing else unless you have questions for me. If you would like to discuss this in more detail, I am open. I can't give you very specifics, but in private, I can give you some additional information if you so desire. Any questions for the police chief? Thank you, chief. Thank you. Superintendent of Recreation.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to welcome Hector Mapes, our newest uh, full-time employee to the Parks Department. Um, he started uh, January 1st. Uh, he's a great addition. He comes with many valuable skills and knowledge and capabilities, so he's definitely a great addition to our Parks Department. Our update on our maintenance department, um, there have been several trees down on the reservoir trails, so they're working to get those removed, especially the ones that are crossing active trails right now. Um, they are power washing uh, with that big steamer machine that we have from COVID, the locker rooms at War Memorial Pool. Um, there's years and years of worth of paint built up in those locker rooms, so they are in the process of power washing that out now. Um, so when the weather breaks in early spring, they can do a new resurfacing paint job on there. Hopefully that's not gonna chip as easily because we're getting all those layers and layers and years and years of paint off. Um, the bathroom stalls were installed at Wool Slayer Field. Um, <laughs> And they're also doing constant uh, resurfacing and upkeeping of the ice rink during the week. Um, and then on the weekends as well, wood filling the barrel uh, so it can be resurfaced uh, by the skate staff during the weekends. Um, the recreation department, um, if you checked out our site, our winter programming is up. Um, our new to us uh, now, we're doing boxing clinics along with we still have our regular Monday through Friday uh, boxing class um, that you register and pay the monthly fee, but we're now adding clinics uh, just for another introduction and use of our bo great boxing facility that we have. Indoor soccer, basketball clinics, crochet, cheerleading clinics, martial arts, um, and we do have our spring two spring programs up, the spring pr program when the kids have no school that week. That registration is up as long uh, along with our break dancing. Uh, we still do have our free programming going on uh, for the teen and youth, our open gym, our teen boxing, story time come alive, and the youth fitness. Um, I'd like to say that we were awarded funding for 2023 by the Orange County Youth Bureau. We just got notice. Um, we're gonna get $10,000 towards our summer playground lunch program and 28,820 towards our free recreational fitness programs. Um, it's definitely a major help by getting reimbursed for these uh, free programs that are very well attended uh, throughout the year. Uh, the dog park, we are having another event there for Valentine's Day. Um, Nicole did come up with a clever name and that will be out soon, uh, that event with the dog park and a whole kissing booth. <laughs> um, ice rink, if you've gone by on the weekends, um, it's been very busy, very active. Our Saturdays, we started some themed Saturdays there with different decades of music and glow parties. This past Saturday was a, a rock and roll Saturday, so we played the theme music along with it. Uh, we also added a, a senior skate and uh, just an adult skate uh, during the week. That was very, that was um, not too well attended, but it was asked a lot, so we're hoping that those numbers pick up so we can keep that going into February. We also uh, keep an eye out for Cops and Coco uh, event that we're gonna have at the ice skating rink. The chief said he's gonna be out there ice skating. Um, he used to be a professional figure skater back in the day, so keep an eye out for that. Just my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Salvation Army is also interested in joining with us and doing a hot cocoa night down at the ice skating rink. And also we're in the process of working with community development for a winter festival at the ice skating rink. Any questions? Yes. Alderman Tobin? I just made one, one suggestion. I know we have a no smoking sign on the other side of the rink, but uh, there was someone smoking like right next to the picnic tables and when I was there and it was just mm -hmm. getting all over the place. And maybe a temporary sign. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll look uh, into their placements. And I went down at. there. The kids had a great time. There's all these kids. They're loving skating with their parents. Uh, in fact, a uh, friend of mine I work with, he grew up here. He sometimes go to ice time with his kids. It cost him over 50 bucks. He came over here to visit his parents and they went out for a few dollars and enjoyed some good family time. You know, so that was very good. Uh, and I was just curious as a neighbor of the Academy Ave Park, I noticed the pavilion was taken down. Mm -hmm. I just, I was driving by the other day. I was just, not that I'm, 
in favor of replacing it? I was just wondering, is there a plan to replace it or just? Is it they are, uh, they're gonna build, if you've seen, um, Maple Hill has it, Davidge Park has it, um, the single pavilions that just have one picnic table. Oh, okay. Um, and that was there, it was just a gazebo that was really close to the road and was never used for anything. Um, I believe it was for the bicentennial parade that it was put up years and years ago. Um, so it was falling apart and was only used for things that it shouldn't be used for. Right. So <laughs> it was taken down. Yeah. But it, something is going to be replaced uh, by summer for our summer lunch program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Alderman Kleiner? Thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, Raylan. Good evening. Um, I had a constituent question I asked if uh, Wool Slayer Field, the track, is that going to be available for any public use? Because they, it's it's always locked. So Yeah, once um, we're waiting for our fencing to get put up around the track. So once the fencing is up and we can, we don't want people going, uh, especially with the snow, like snowmobiles or four wheelers right. and tearing up the track. So once we get the fencing up and prohibit anything larger than bodies going through the gate to get onto the track, then it will be open to public, yes. Okay, and also um, more pickleball discussions. So I know we're waiting for information on possibility of doing pickleball, pickleball courts, but mm -hmm. I just want to keep that fresh in our minds. Yes, yep. Um, it seems to be quite popular. Yes, it is very popular, and I know it is hard. Um, I don't like sharing tennis Yes, the tennis players don't want to share with the pickleball. Pickleball no, doesn't no. want to share with tennis. Um, so we are looking for an alternate spot. Um, to have them placed, even if it's just with temporary netting um, that can be like put out and taken away. Right. So okay. We Thank are you. definitely looking into it. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Ray Lynn. City Clerk. Nothing this evening. All right. Any questions for the City Clerk? All right. Public hearings and grievances. Good evening. We have a public hearing this evening. Notice is hereby given that the City of Middletown will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, January 17th, 2023, on or as near as 7.30 p.m. as possible, Common Council Chambers, second floor, 16 James Street, to hear any and all persons wishing to be heard on the proposed zoning amendment to Chapter 475 to allow two-family dwellings in OR2, two-family owner-occupied residential districts, which are zoning districts, to permanently be non-owner-occupied if the dwelling was occupied as a two-family dwelling at the time the zoning district was created. Any persons wishing to be heard will be given the opportunity to speak either for or against the proposed zoning amendment. The, com the complete proposed zoning amendment is available in the Office of the Common Council Clerk, 16 James Street, or in, on the city website. The public hearing will be conducted in person and via video teleconference and live on Channel 20. Any person unable to participate at the time of the public hearing can email comments may be submitted in advance to R. McCormick at middletown-ny.com by order of the Common Council, Richard McCormick, Clerk of the Common Council. At this time, the public hearing is now open to the public. Any member would like to speak? Okay, any board member? Alderman. I got a motion to close. So moved. Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Old Witt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing is now closed. Remarks of Alderman. Alderman Witt. Nothing this evening. Alderman Green. Yeah, thank you very much. Just, uh, Mayor, my condolences to, to you and your family um, on your loss. Uh, you know, please pass that along to everyone. Um, <laughs> congratulations to our uh, Super Bowl champions. It's always wonderful when you can see our youth coming in here doing some amazing things uh, and to go undefeated and win the Super Bowl and many of those kids' first year. That's that's just quite the achievement. Um, and just a reminder that we're not going to have our um, constituents meeting for February. We are going to pass because even though it seems to be 60 degrees some of these days, there's still a real possibility of some snow and ice uh, in the future. So we will meet again on uh, March 13th here in the uh, council chamber. So thank you very much. Okay, Alderman Kleiner. Um, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, the YMCA and the uh, Greater Middletown Interfaith Council. They held a uh, Martin Luther King event on Sunday at the YMCA annex and uh, um, usually uh, James Rollins, uh, Bishop Rollins, would be hosting the event, but uh, he had a death in the family. My condolences to him. But uh, it was a very nice presentation, and the 
so many of the kids got up and before they did their poetry or played their music, they said, I am living the dream. So it, it made it very real to them and uh, it was a very nice event. Um, the warming station still needs uh, a bunch of two hour volunteers and if you can do it, this is from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. just to help serve food and such. And, and uh, it's not an overnight thing. So again, that's middletownwarmingstation.com. Um, I want to also make sure people do save the date, April 22nd. That's Saturday, April 22nd. That is going to be our city spring cleanup event. And uh, so we hopefully it won't conflict with anything like little league parades or school events or such. So we keep trying to get that date out early enough so people understand it uh, and people save it. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, I want to send my condolences uh, to the mayor's family uh, for Charles Clark. Um, also, my neighbor, Dr. Perita, passed away yesterday. Um, and he's uh, just a longtime volunteer of medical help around the world. so. He uh, will be missed. And uh, our, our opponent in one of our elections, Joe Finner, and uh, his dad, Mr. Stack, um, passed away. We're all familiar with Mr. Stack. He was quite a character, but he, he will be missed too. So um, my condolences to all, and uh, thank you. Alderman Ray. Good evening. Um, Mayor, my condolences to your family. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, for our MIDI football, a lot of those kids tonight were my students that I see at school, and uh, they're always wearing their jerseys in the building. They're a great team. Uh, they're just, I think they're, they're youth in our town, if you take a good look at them, always make us very proud. And I love moments like these when we get to kind of highlight that for everyone. And I just want to say congratulations to them and thank you to the coaches, because I know those are all volunteers giving up a lot of their time and the, the team moms and things like that. It's a big job and it really does take a village, but great work to all of them. Um, I just want to apologize to everyone in this room in advance for my change of name. I've returned to my maiden name for anyone who wants to know why everyone's calling me Alderman Ray. Uh, but. <laughs> It'll take some time, but I think we'll get used to it. That's really all I have for this evening. As relates to um, our talk tonight about the, uh, the Maple Hill Park and what we're doing with the pool, I just say to our constituents, we will be gathering some answers from everyone in our ward that we can gather from the neighborhood and try to you know, get some ideas to bring back to rec and, and see what we can do. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Johnson. Alderman Ray, I'm already in, so we're good. We're good with that. Um, um, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry to hear about that. I know it was a long week in regards to Linda as well. Nothing else, thank you. Alderman John Francois. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor. My condolences to you and your family. And this evening, uh, DPW committee met this evening. We had a representative from uh, Disney, uh, members of the DASNY uh, members. Uh, this is a very exciting project for the city and the regions because to provide water and sewer services to the uh, area, this is gonna be pretty big. I'm looking forward for that uh, project to start. Can't wait. And also, uh, congratulations to the uh, to the Middies uh, D1 football team for winning the uh, Super Bowl. Uh, I seen these kids coming up here, it remind me how time is so, uh, goes so fast because I remember my two boys started playing youth football and, and that kind of brings a lot of memory. It almost brings tears to my eyes as times went so fast. You know, I missed that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Tobin? Uh, yes. Uh, my condolences to the mayor. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, yeah, congratulations to the MIDI champs. That's great to see. And I, I think I saw a lot of them at the MIDI Bowl game, too. So we're from the youth all the way up. They're, you know, Milltown's fully engaged in our youth, and it shows. Uh, and also, well, sports, uh, Stephen Moncherry, uh, congratulations to him. He won the prestigious Eastern States Wrestling uh, Classic as a coach and uh, a referee. That's one of the toughest tournaments in our region. A lot of uh, future NCAA uh, champs come out of that tournament. Like they move on to, uh, I've even seen Olympic champs have wrestled there. So it's really a, a tough tournament and that he placed one first. I think he knocked off the number one seeded person in the state already going in, you know, the season's not over. So congratulations. So 
the Middletown team had a number of place finishers. I think there's a, a female wrestling team now, so they're uh, and they had a whole female tournament. So it's a it's a sport that's on the rise. So and I'd like to congratulate them for all the hard work they're doing. And then uh, I just wanted to let everybody know the reason I figured out the reason why we're having a light winter is because I bought a snowblower this year. <laughs> we haven't been able to use it once. <laughs> but, but, <Thank> so <laughs> maybe I'll continue. Thank you. All right, new business. Good evening. <laughs> We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt appointing members of the Industrial Development Agency. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Feiner. Aye. <laughs> Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carried. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green reappointing Fran Emilio to the Board of Assessment Review. A resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Rope. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ray? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner appointing Jim Burgess to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Resolution sponsored by Alderman uh, Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Ray. Any discussion? Rope. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ray? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ray, reappointing members of the Electrical Licensing Board. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ray, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ray? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, authorizing a proposal from H2O to renew contracts for services at the water and wastewater treatment plants. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ray? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. All spon a resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois awarding bids for surplus vehicles. A resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ray? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin authorizing the 2023 PERMA contract. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, seconded by Alderman Ray. Any, any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt authorizing an agreement with Claim Doc Services to administer the city's employer sponsored employee health benefit plan. Resolution sponsored by Alderman. Wait. Second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ray? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green authorizing a sale and compensating use tax sharing agreement with the County of Orange. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green. Seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin, aye. Jean Francois, aye. Johnson, aye. Ray, aye. Kleiner, aye. Green, aye. Witt, aye. President Rodriguez, aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Aldrin Kleiner authorizing an application for Round 7 Restore New York funds for the ONW Building Restoration Project. Resolution sponsored by Aldrin Kleiner, second by Aldrin Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin, aye. Jean Francois, <coughs> aye. Johnson, aye. Ray, aye. Kleiner, aye. Green, aye. Witt, aye. President Rodriguez, aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ray authorizing a street closure for the Winter Festival. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ray, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ray? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson authorizing an amendment to City Code Chapter 475 zoning. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Jean Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin, aye. Jean Francois, aye. Johnson, aye. Ray, aye. Kleiner, aye. Green, aye. Witt, aye. President Rodriguez, aye. Carries. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion from the floor. Go ahead. I'd like to resolve the Common Council of the City of Milltown hereby authorize a public hearing to take place on Tuesday, February 7th, 2023, or at or as close to 7.30 p.m. as possible to hear any and all persons who wish to be heard on the proposed subdivision at Orange Terrace. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ray, second by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Alderman Johnson. 
Uh, yes, thank you. I know we discussed this in committee, and uh, Alderwoman Ray and I do understand that there is somewhat of a tacit approval of this project by the administration, but we appreciate the opportunity. Uh, most of the people we've heard from in our residence, in our ward rather, are contiguous to the property, and they're, uh, they're upset by it. So this will give them an opportunity to come and the entire council can hear what they have to say. So thank you. Okay, anyone else? Rope. Tobin. Aye. Jean-Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carol. Audit. Oh, yes. <laughs> Audit. Sure. Where is Mr. Massey when I need him? Did I ever say I needed him? Here, you Here, got, I it. got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> You got I it. moved it. Come on, come on. I got it right here. We got it. We got it. We got it. We have it. <laughs> I move the accounts be audited. The claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman John Francois. Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Move for adjournment. So moved. moved.